So, SCL. Awesome, awesome idea. Super novel. Really happy that they're trying something new. Uh, I think Melee, for a really long time, has lacked uh, kind of ingenuity or something new, something different. And so, I actually really like the idea of it. I like the format for the most part. Um, good, th good start. Things I don't like about it so far, and I'll get into other things I like about it. Uh, qualifier, way too close to the tournament itself. Fiction and Moki both got kind of trolled by it, where they played for like 80 trillion hours, and they had to play first thing the next morning. Uh, like after like five hours of sleep, not even knowing who their opponent was like going to be. And that's just like, that's just not good environment to compete in. Uh, as a competitor, I almost wouldn't even subject myself to that if I was in their shoes sometimes. Like obviously I'm going to at the end of the day, but it would be just like, oh my god, are you serious? Like, you gotta think of the competitors a little more there. Uh, they've been open to criticism about it, which I'm happy for. And I suspect that next time they will do it differently. Uh, they're very open to criticism, some it always is, so I respect the heck out of that. So qualifier way too close. Maybe play in the middle of the week or the week before. Anything, just enough time. Because it'll also give you better melee. Like, if you can map out your bracket, everyone will have more time to prepare. There won't be, like, the lingering thing over their head, like, who am I gonna play? It'll be just objectively, like, better melee. Like, at a major, you would never find out the day before, like, oh, these, I, th I don't even know who I might play, like, up until the day before. That would just never happen, right? Uh, and I think it would contribute to way better melee overall. Um, as far as the tournament format itself, like, the league, I do, again, really like the idea of it. The thing is, we didn't know there was anything on the line other than money until the very end. And so it was kind of like, when they first announced it, it was kind of like, okay, so dope. Like, we get to play for four weeks. But it felt kind of weird that there was nothing after, right? It was like, so we just played for four weeks and then that's that? There's no, like, finals or anything? Even if, like, they didn't pay out for it. I, I'd, I'd play in a finals for free. Like, I would just play the finals because it was like, uh, okay, this is, like, pride. This is, like, all, all we work for. Who actually wins the league, right? It's, like, kind of a championship around, like, a World Series or an NBA Finals or whatever. So, it was kind of weird. I know they have Summit now, but we didn't know that until last week. And even then, it kind of feels like two distinct entities. It doesn't feel like two parts of the same thing. It just kind of feels like, okay, so we did this, and whoever gets this does just by by collateral gets into Summit. They didn't feel like connected entities in our head, and, and I know a lot of those people felt that way. Uh, so... It'd be cool if there was like something legitimate, like, okay, at the beginning, you play for these weeks, and then this happens at the end, and then winner takes all, or whatever, right? Like, that would be really cool. Yeah, I'm sure that the summit uh, depends on the viewership for it, and I 100% agree with that. But my point is just that it would be cool to have something at the end, uh, from the beginning, that we know we're working towards. And obviously, uh, if you have something at the end, and you know how it works, you're going to be trying a lot harder in the weeks before to make sure that you get the bet you put yourself in the, you position yourself in the best possible way to succeed once it ends right so i think that all could have could have been worked on a little bit but it still was it still was a really good idea overall um yeah they did season two into another summit but they announced beforehand like this summit like is the finals for the scl and like even if they just announced it at the beginning like this is the scl and then there's summit after this and whoever does placing is in the scl that will determine your placing in Summit. And I also think that they could do a better job of kind of making the exact placements week to week matter, right? Because outside of the money, which again, I'm not complaining about like not enough money. I'm not saying that money should should be the answer. This is a separate criticism. Uh, in fact, it's awesome that they're putting money in players' pockets like this, and it's a godsend, honestly. But if there was something tangible, like if you like, like maybe like a point system, Every week for a certain placing, you get points, and then the highest points, that, that determines the seedings at the end. I think that could be really dope, right? I think that would make it a lot better. instead Because it also, it's kind of weird where... I don't know exactly how the seeding for someone's going to work, but they said it does matter. So depending on how, maybe they are doing something like that. Uh, I can't say for sure. But if it's just like, oh, the end of week four determines seeding for someone, I think it'd be really whack. What if, like, Mango just really badly? You're not just going to seed in, like, ninth, right? So either A, clarity that that is, in fact, what they're going to do. Or B, um, altering the system so that's how it works would be extremely beneficial to all parties, in my in my opinion. Because it always makes the event more hype. Like, if this is my, this could be just extrapolation on my part, and I could and I could be completely wrong. But if we knew from the beginning that these are point systems and these matches are super important for Summit, I feel like viewership might have actually been better because people would be super like, oh, well, they're like a Summit. This is all determines that. This is like a circuit for it. Who gets in every week? Like someone in Division Two, like okay, are they going to get into Summit? 
I think that that would be really, really hype, right? Like, this can make it, any Division 2 week could make a break. Like, Ginger making that one run one week could have just got him into Summit. I think that would make that run so much more hype, at least to me. Um, I, I, I don't want to sound cocky. It's like, I know from my spot, it's kind of... I, I'm not guaranteed to get into Summit, but it's it's very unlikely that I wouldn't, right? Only, like, Zane and Mango were more uh, of a lock-in to get into Summit than me. Uh, none arguably up there with me, but just generally speaking, like... It wasn't going to be that exciting for me either way, but I think the point system would have made it so that every week I was like, have to win. Like, if I can get seed above Zane or Mango, like, that'd be awesome, right? Just something to shoot for every week other than the money. But yeah, so I think that some change like that could have made the event super hype, and not that it wasn't already, but it would have been, like, even more hype. It's like, oh my god, this is going to make or break, like, their summit chances. And obviously everyone wants to get into summit. Having said that, uh, still really good format. I love that they're kind of subsidizing us through their own viewership and it's like kind of just giving back directly it feels like they really just care about us and they want us to like have this thing and obviously like they want the viewership and stuff but you can tell it's like they're doing this for us and for the viewers like they really care about it and that's like awesome for me to see uh i do like the idea of playing high levels every week like i love the fact that every week i'm guaranteed at least two really high level sets and i think that's perfect it's something that we've all been missing and i think that it's exposing a lot of people uh for not being super in shape like i think mango is f***ing incredible and i still think he's top two but it's also showing that like the more he puts off line he is still susceptible to some bad losses but the more he does these sets the better he'll get at those sets still and he'll continue to get more and more consistent the more he does it and slippy donated 10k to the bot yeah and slippy's been unbelievably awesome like Slippy's just giving back to the community in every way for everything it's giving him. And it's not giving him anywhere near what he deserves, in my opinion. Uh, but it's not that it's like, oh, we can, we're just like shafting him. It's like, it's just a, that's the downside of a niche game, right? So, that's my take on it. But, awesome, awesome format. I, it's novel, it's new, it's fresh, it's exciting, it's a breath of fresh air. And... I like stuff like this. I want Melee to continue to experiment and try new formats consistently because I think that it's just really good for both longevity and the viewership of the game. Like, things can get stale. Like, even when you have just eight majors a year and there's just nothing at the end, you know, it's... We're not going to stop watching Genesis or Big House or Evo, but it would be nice to have something different, right? It'd be nice to have something different. So... I love this. I, I really love the idea behind it, and any criticism I hear, I have given here, it's just my attempt to kind of give them constructive feedback and not in any way trying to bash their ideas or tournament series or their stream or whatever uh, because I'm unbelievably thankful for what they've done and what they've continued to do, especially the, how much they've helped me. Like, they've put, they've given me so many opportunities to get out there and just do stuff and get my name out there and I can't thank them enough for that. How do I, how legit are online results? So this is another loaded topic. Um... How legit are online results? Online results should not be thrown out the window under any circumstance. I hate that certain people have this stigma around them that online doesn't matter in any capacity. Do I think that on the best online means you're the best in the world? No. No. It's not one-to-one -one quite like that. There are certain things in tournament that you can't replicate in your house, on a computer, on netplay, where there's lag, where there are desyncs. Uh, you just you can't you can't replicate all of that. It's not possible. But I do think that still at its core, you're still playing melee. There's still some issues, of course, like Fox Illusion being unbelievable. Fox and Falco Illusion being pseudo unreactable on that play. Yeah, that sucks. That's annoying. Streaming while playing is obviously to a lot of people a detriment. I actually don't think it affects me very much. I'm pretty good. How to quantify it? You can't quantify it, and I think trying to quantify it is a waste of time. Uh, I think streaming does impact a lot of people negatively, and that's just not what a tournament environment is like. I'm really good because I grew up on netplay, and I entered netplay tournaments when I was younger, or when I was younger, when I was coming up. So, for me, I'm super used to it, and I'm very easy. I can remove myself from the stream, I've minimized my stream chat, and I just go in and I play. And I've done this before, so for me, it's particularly easy. But a lot of other people, it isn't. Uh, I know Zane had to turn off his stream. I don't feel like I ever need to do that. I think I'm really good at kind of minimizing the impact that the stream has on me personally i don't let the chat get to me too much and when it comes time for tournament i just put my stream down and i honestly forget i'm streaming sometimes but there are some differences having said that you're still playing melee you're still playing the same game it hasn't changed yeah there might be some lag spikes there might be an unfortunate desync but at the end of the day i still think 
whoever prepares the most, whoever practices the most, whoever studies the most, and whoever plays the most is going to do the best. And I don't think there's a substitute for that. And practicing doesn't just mean playing, it means entering tournaments. If you don't enter a LAN tournament for months and months and years on end, you're going to suck when you come back. Like, that's just a matter of fact. There are some examples, it's not always the rule, it's not always the case, but it is the general rule to which there are some exceptions. It's not an exception. It's the rule and there are some exceptions. You cannot expect to succeed in any tournament environment if you haven't been putting yourself in it to begin with. And so I think that the people who haven't competed and then they suck and they're like, oh, it's just netplay. It's like, no, it's not netplay. You just haven't played a netplay tournament. You haven't competed in months. You shouldn't expect to do well. The same way Aatrox shouldn't have came back and expected to do it when he wasn't practicing and he didn't do well. If the best player in the world couldn't do it, or I'm not going to use the term best player, but if the number one player in the world, the consensus number one player in the world couldn't do it, you can't either. I don't care who you are. I don't care if, whatever, like... Fiction, I don't give any crap to about it because he maintains his stance of why he doesn't like netplay tournaments and then he doesn't complain about it. And he just says, yeah, no, like I'm going to enter the tournament to come back. I'm going to try to get better, but I'm just not interested in competing netplay tournaments. And I think that's completely fine. But there's certain people who are like, oh, it's, I just, I just can't do it because it's netplay. It's, it's, it's impossible. It's just, either one, you have a terrible setup, in which case go get a new setup. If you're, if you have the money to play Melee for a living, you have the money to go buy a setup, just straight up, if that's your, like, career. And if you can't, then you need to do something else to subsidize yourself anyways. So you should, that should be your first priority, not complaining about netplay tournaments. And if you do have a good setup, it's not bad. It just isn't. If you have a 144 or 240 hertz monitor, and you have decent internet, and I know not everyone can have decent internet, I recognize that. I know as well as anyone. But with rollback, you don't need, you just need serviceable internet. And if you need, you can go up to three buffer. Does it suck? Yeah, but it's the best we can have, and you gotta stop bitching about it. Straight up. And especially with the polling fix, there's no reason to complain. There's literally no reason to complain about it. Yes, there's an audio delay. Get the audio mixer, use the wasabi trick. I am not gonna ever blame a tournament on my audio because I know that there's a better fix for it that I just haven't done because I'm being lazy. And so, yeah, I'll complain about it when I'm playing, but I'm never going to blame a tournament like, oh, I only lost because Mango side beat me and I, it was unreactable. No, it's, I could have gotten the audio mixer. That's my fault. That's on me. And you go, oh, Mango's in chat. What if you're 20 at Amada? Shut up, dude. <laughs> but yeah, it, I think that's just unbelievably whack. It's defeating the purpose of the game. And also, again, it's all we fucking have. Why are you complaining? We're so much better off than every other fighting game. We actually have a way to do tournaments. We have a play, like I can play Mango with minimal lag. Do you realize how ridiculous that is? I'm in the boondocks of New York, of Long Island, across the country from him, and I don't even have good internet. Like you guys see my internet? It looks like Minecraft 20% of the time. It's terrible my sh the, the internet quality on my stream occasionally. And I can play Mango with barely any rollback artifacts. And you're gonna complain that it's netplay because there's some lag spikes? Seriously? Like, how ungrateful and how delusional do you have to be to blame Netplay and then say that you're, oh, I only lost because of this one lag spike. You didn't lose to because of the lag spike. You lost because you didn't prepare and you lost because you're bad. Get over it. Get over yourself and go home and get better. How many, remember the thing with uh, S-Fat and I think it was Mewtwo King with a TV, sh or S-Fat and Mango, the TV shut off at SmashCon. Who remembers that? Are you going to say that CRT tournaments aren't viable because stuff like that can happen? Are you going to say that Shine 2018 just didn't count because of that one set with Chu and Leffen? Shit like this happens everywhere. Just stop being a baby. So online results, no, they're not the end-all be-all, of course. They're not one-to-one -one indicative of CRT results. There are differences. But they're pretty damn good. And they're the best that we have right now. So you better get over it and you better get used to it because it's not going anywhere soon. Anytime. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And that's just how it is. And honestly, would you rather just not have any tournaments? Would you rather the community be on its back tail end of its life when we came back? No. Of course not. Also, Mango, you see this wave turns out a shield? You better stop daring my shield, brother. I'm practicing this shit. I'm coming for- I'm, I'm not letting you get away with that shit anymore. It took me five years to learn it. And I got the top five without it, but it's time I incorporated it.